Okay, hi guys. Um, this is the first video of a series that I'm planning to produce on uh, explaining what we can do with this global data set, GBIF, uh, the Global Biodiversity Information Facility. This is an international uh, data set for biodiversity data. And uh, there are tons of information. You can see that he here we have this number of occurrences of data available on um biodiversity in this website and this data can be used for different purposes for research and also for classes at university or even like high school and other levels of education. Uh, today I'm going to show you the basics on how to access uh, the data and how to download it and uh, we are going to use here you see that on the front this is the front page of GBIF you see that we have a search box and above it, we have some tabs that we can use to choose the ways that we're going to do the search. Today, we're going to use the Occurrences uh, tab. So by clicking on that, you're going to be directed to this page here. Uh, on the right side, we have the Occurrences data. Uh, so it's just a table with all the data that you have in there. And up in here, you have the number of occurrences that we're getting, which is the total number for the uh, system. Uh, on the left side, we have some tools for uh, sorting information. So basically filter filtering uh, information um, according to different criteria. So we are going to try to do that. Uh, let's say that we want to get information on this um, fern species, Hymenophyllum polyanthus. So we click on the search button. Uh, we are going to be suggested another name. In our case, we are not going to use that, so no. And you see that on the right side, the data has changed already. We have less results, so 200,000 results more or less. And uh, they're all uh, within the scope of Hymenophyllum polyanthus name. Uh, we can uh, sort out information even further. So, for example, basis of record is an interesting tab for us to click. Here you can see that most of the cases are within either human observation, which is which can be a picture, it can be some kind of other record that somebody did uh, in the nature, and uh, preserved specimens, which is basically vultures. Uh, we are going to click on this because this is basically a deposit uh, of information in a museum or so. Um, the next one that we are going to click is location. So location, uh, you see that we have some options here. And now what they are telling us is, on the data, if you look at the table, uh, one of the columns is about coordinates. So some of these entries, they do have information on where the plant was collected, down to the coordinates, so including the coordinates of the location, and some don't. So this one doesn't have, this one has. Um, I want to filter uh, this uh, data down to only samples that have coordinates available. So we are going to click on including coordinates. There we go. Everyone here has a coordinate number and uh, you can see that the number of occurrences is even further reduced. Um, okay, uh, we are also going to filter plants occurring in Japan in our case, and uh, I think we are ready to go. So for us, it's fine. So we got down to 5,470 results, which is the reasonable number for us to work. Once you're happy with your selection, you can click on download. Uh, you might be asked to delete the information that you have here on the QRI. You can just click on that, it's deleted. And then you're going to be given uh, three options of download and there's a uh, simple explanation of the differences. Um, we are going to click choose the simple download today. Once you do so, uh, a screen like this is going to pop up showing you uh, the agreement to use this website and also some information on how to cite this inf uh, the information that you're downloading in your study. So please uh, take some time to read this and understand uh, what are the rules about using this uh, database. Once you're uh, happy with that, you can click on Understood. 
and uh, you're going to be directed to another uh, screen. On this screen, you see that it's written under processing. Basically, they are processing the data so you can get it. And uh, the data is going to be sent to you by email. So in order to do that, in my case, I am already logged in. Um, you will have to log in to be able to do this. So you will need, if you don't have an account here, you are going to be asked to create an account. Um, the notification you see is going to be sent to my email address here and uh, it might take up to three hours for that to happen. In most cases it is very quick for us to get the data but in some cases if it's a big data set that you're asking for it might take some time. But anyways you don't need to stay on this screen, uh, the information is going to be sent to your email and uh, this is an example of an email that you're going to receive. Uh, it looks like this. So you get an URL for you to download your data and you also have a prompt here explaining how to cite the information that you're getting. So you need to put this on your paper or your report uh, in order to properly cite the, the source of your data. Um, the URL, when you click on it, uh, you're going to be downloaded a zip file. So you need to unzip the file and uh, once you unzip the file, uh, you're going to see a CSV file uh, that looks more or less like, not this one, oh, sorry. Yeah, it looks more or less like this, okay? This is the correct one. Um, if you cannot unzip correctly, uh, please Google. There are some, like if you use Mac computers, for example, the unzip of a CSV file can cause some changes on the file format. So you might need to actually open your file options and import the information as a CSV file. But uh, the end result should look like this. You should get a table uh, with the information that you are asking for. Uh, this table you see has several columns. Some of them are not going to be really helpful for your research. Uh, so you can just go on and delete. Uh, in our case, for the next videos, we are going to be using the, the columns about the species name, like this one here. And we are going to be also using the coordinates information. So you see that we have latitude and longitude information here. In this case, this data set, set that I downloaded, some of the data didn't have uh, the coordinates data, but in our case, we are downloading a new data set with the coordinates data. So it's going to be all complete there. Um, okay, so that's that about the GBIF download of data and so on. Um, hope this video is helpful. If you need my help, you know how to get in touch with me through my email. So just send me an email and ask questions. Thank you.